When the off-taker or the energy seller fail to fulfill their obligations in the PPA, an event of default is triggered. Default is a material breach of the PPA, which gives right to the off-taker or the seller to terminate the PPA. Usually, a cure period is given to the defaulting party to fix the problems that are causing the default. The cure period can range from 30 to 90 days in most of the cases. If the problems are not fixed during the cure period, the contract will be terminated. The PPA will also include a provision called Lender Step-In Right, which allows the lender to assume the rights and obligations of the energy seller. We will see later on in the course that most renewable projects employ debt financing, and for the energy seller to attract debt financing, the PPA must include a step-in right for the lender. Lender will use their step-in right to resolve the issues that the energy seller is facing, including, if necessary, injecting additional capital into the project. The PPA should also allow that PPA rights and obligations to be transferable to a new party, a substitute entity, in case the energy seller cannot continue. This transfer is generally referred to as novation of the PPA. There are certain events, such as a natural or political force majeure events, that can make the PPA performance impossible. These are events like earthquake, flood, war, riots, or strikes. In the event of prolonged natural or political force majeure, either party can terminate the PPA. Note how we discuss termination of the PPA in the context of defaults and how limited the contractual termination rights of the parties are. All these indicate that both parties cannot back out of the PPA once it is signed. So, the key question is, what happens after the PPA termination? If the energy seller terminates the PPA due to off-taker's default, such as non-payment for energy generated, the energy seller has the right to require off-taker to purchase the project. The purchase price consists of the outstanding debt, equity investments made into the project, and discounted future dividends from the project. If the off-taker terminates the PPA due to energy seller's breach of the PPA, the energy seller has to compensate for losses that the off-taker has or will incur as a result of the PPA termination. Often, the off-taker has an option to purchase the project. This is especially true in emerging markets. The purchase price typically consists of the outstanding debt and equity investments made into the project. If the PPA is terminated because of the force majeure event, the energy seller has the right to require off-taker to purchase the project. The project purchase price, in case of the PPA termination due to force majeure, includes outstanding debt and sometimes, subject to negotiations, the purchase price may also include equity investments made into the project. We have now reviewed the major terms of the PPA, such as energy sales, parties obligations, risk allocation, PPA defaults and termination, and post-termination obligations. The reason we had to cover some of the legal terms, which, although important, may not be relevant for financial analysis, is a term called project bankability. Or in case of the PPA, it is the PPA bankability. Bankability means that the project or the PPA is financeable, that the energy seller can raise necessary equity and debt financing to develop the power project. The key PPA terms that make it bankable include the PPA tenor, which has to be long enough to allow repaying debt and recovering equity investment. Next is energy price, and volume risk has to be taken by the off-taker, so the project generates a secure revenue stream. The exchange rate risk has to be borne by the off-taker, so the revenue generated by the project can be used to repay the debt and recover equity investments. The off-taker has to be creditworthy. We have seen in this course what can make the off-taker creditworthy. The off-taker is typically an investment-grade utility, or sovereign guarantees are given by the state to the energy seller, in case of the off-taker defaults. And, finally, the subject that we have just covered, the post-termination obligations, all have to be covered by the PPA. Project bankability discussion we have had so far is not exhaustive of all the items or requirements that can make the project bankable. The bankability varies from project to project and is subject to the interpretations and analysis by the project lenders and equity investors.